What's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Tone Setter TV. Stay tuned with me, Christopher, not Chris, as we literally get into somebody's business. All right, here's the number one thing I want you to do. Look at the person next to you. Look at the person on the other side of you. That's your brother. Tell him, you're my brother. <laughs> Say, I got your back. Do you got mine? Do you got mine? Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Christopher, not Chris, Tone Setter Entertainment, here for another episode of Tone Setter TV. Today I have with me Mr. Daniel Alderetti, otherwise known as Coach Alderetti of MVP Performance. How you doing today, man? I'm doing well, man. Thanks so much for having me here. Hey, man, thanks for coming, man. We really appreciate you for showing up to the show, man. Like I stated to you before the show, uh, all this, all we're doing here at Tone Center TV is just trying to give information about local entrepreneurs in our community, uh, where they came from, why they're doing it, and different ways that you know maybe they can impart some knowledge that can help you do it. Um, so, I mean, getting started, MVP Performance. You know what I'm saying? What, what? What exactly do you guys do? Um, great question, man. So we've been doing this a uh, little over, going on 12 years now. And uh, over the years, we've really created a brand and a precedence of, of uh, developing some of the best athletes, not only in the region, in San Antonio, in Texas, but throughout the entire nation. A lot of these athletes that we're working from, from Steele, from Judson, Wagner, throughout the entire city, we really had an opportunity to really develop them. And from that point on, they've kind of gone into the collegiate level and not only competed for starting positions, but really competed for national championships and titles. So it's been really exciting to kind of see over the course of the years. Uh, I've had a wonderful opportunity to even work with you back when you were <laughs> younger as well. So to see uh, not only the, the, the precedence in the win percentages, but more importantly, as a person, as the man, as the, uh, as the fathers that they're eventually becoming, man, it's been an awesome experience. That's good, man. And it's always a blessing to be able to, you know, go back and look at something you saw so long ago and you see it now. And it's like, man, so many the levels that have sure. been accomplished. Yeah. Just, just thinking about it, man. I was thinking about it before you came, man. I remember when meeting you, you weren't even the football coach yet. No, not at all. You know what I mean? We didn't really know a lot about you. Mm -hmm. Then come to find out, oh man, this guy played arena football. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, this guy actually like has done, like has done something. I think the previous coach we had was like a one year coach. He just gotcha. came for a year and took off. So it was like man, seeing 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 that type of thing and then elevating that from coaching to now coaching on a large scale. Gotcha. Uh, you know, do you know? I just I just feel like that's that's a great accomplishment, man. And uh, it's good to see. All right, gentlemen, once you are done, your last and final one is a push press. A push press. You are done for the day. Push press. Here's the only difference no core, no back hypers. I want you to get a dumbbells of your choice. Ten upright rows, ten shrugs, a bar circuit basically, ten of each. Then come back, push press, and another bar circuit with dumbbells of your choice. Then your final set, push press, all the way to bar circuit. See, um, so all that being said, you know, what made you start MVP? You know, what made you go from coaching teams at schools to want to do your own training? Great, great question. Um, it all kind of started kind of working those first time experiences, man. I still remember um, kind of getting into this industry. I, I was still raw and young and I was just full of, you know, a lot of ambitions and dreams. And what I first had to understand was that there was a big difference between a calling and a career. And oftentimes, um, we as young adolescents kind of get so strung up on that career aspect of going to college and kind of getting a degree. And oftentimes, if you really look at it, a lot of the degrees that we're getting, we're not even utilizing in that profession. Long story short, what I had to understand kind of the hard way was that I was following after a career versus a calling. And when I understood the difference, man, it completely revolutionized everything. It was during the course of that time uh, you know, in those er early, early stages when I really realized the power of coaching. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Billy Graham. He's regarded as one of the best, you know, and, and, and widely known evangelists. He had said that a coach will reach more people in one year and touch more lives in one year than the average person will in an entire lifetime. And that really stuck to me. That really helped me to understand the power and the importance of what coaching really is, not just in the sport, but also in the life. Yeah, man, and that's important. Uh, that's very important what you said, not just in the sport, but also in the life. Um, because you see a lot of coaches nowadays that are just focused on the wins, you know, and, and, and that's not all coaches. I don't want to put a bad name on coaches because yeah. I've had some great coaches in my lifetime. I've seen some great coaches, in, you know, in different aspects, sure. in different sports. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you get in certain situations where coaches are just about the wins. That's all they really care about. 
And uh, it's nice when you see those coaches that are more concerned with not just the wins, not just the athletic success or the physical, you know, attributes get, getting gained, but also the mental and the, the, the spiritual, you know, the, the, the just, just the mind of the player as For well sure. and the heart of the player as well as, just, as not only just the athleticism. Um, so you, you said 12 years, man. That's, that's what, 12 years? What's, was 2019? That's back to 2007. Yep, that was exactly that's 2007. I, so I, I, I graduated 2006. Yep. Uh, you you coached my best friend Brandon, who graduated in two thousand seven. Yep, yep. Uh, I remember coming to those games. Uh, I remember uh, another guy that's actually doing his own uh, his own training now. Uh, Jeremy McDonald. Yep, yep. Uh, shout out Mac Fit. Uh, but I, I remember those guys playing back for you back then. So I mean, all this time, what is one of your you know greatest accomplishments thus far for your business? Man, that's a that's wow. Uh, that is a common question that, that keeps evolving, uh, for better lack of terms. Um, at first, as I mentioned when I first started, I thought it was more about the wins and losses and state championships. And then once, once you start attaining those things, you kind of start collecting a, a stockpile of, of what you, you think um, accomplishment and success is. And what I started to realize was more importantly what and who these people are um, and who they're becoming. So I've had a great opportunity. I think during the time that, that I was out at New Life, shout out to New Life Christian Academy, probably had some of the best athletes that I mean I had ever coached and I had a great opportunity to um, you know coach some great great athletes. But collectively as a team, I mean it, it was very, very simple to kind of implement whatever we needed to implement because we had such great athletes like Brandon Jackson, Jay Mack, and yourself. So it was so, uh, you know, it was so fun to understand and learn the game of what life was. And then as uh, these athletes kind of matured and developed and went on to, you know, their, their college standpoints and eventually graduated to life, I started to realize what that really meant. And, and the wins and losses were one thing, but more importantly, the wins and losses in life were such a much more important aspect of it. So when you start to see a lot of these athletes that you work with are now district attorneys and lawyers and doctors and great fathers and husbands, that to me sets the precedence of what success really is all about. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of being about the people. Um, so I, I love that you said that, you know, um, because you're the coach. You know, so it, it's 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 just refreshing yeah. to hear. You know, hey, you know, the greatest accomplishment is not necessarily that he got to the state championship, yeah. not necessarily that he made a D one, but he used that D one scholarship to go ahead and become a lawyer. There you go. And that's now it. that's the greatest accomplishment. So that's sure. that's that's great. Um, and you know, ups and downs. It's business. Yeah. So there's there's hills and valleys. For sure. Um, you know what was what is what was one of your biggest challenges, or maybe maybe coming up, or maybe even now. Great, great, uh, great question. In regards to that, man, there was so many different challenges at different stages of uh, the business of life, man. There was so many things that I was going through personally uh, that that I couldn't let hinder or affect, you know, the outcome and the result of what uh, the members, the athletes were looking for. And I think that was one thing that we really tried to emphasize with a lot of our coaches and interns and coaching staff across the board was just to really let them know that your feelings honestly really didn't matter, you know. so many times that we make irrational decisions that really change the course of our destiny when we just really would sit back and just let those feelings subside and make those logical rational decisions I think a lot of our decisions that we make would be a lot more positive than negative so to kind of uh, synopse the or if that's even a word if, <laughs> if you can kind of summarize it if you will everything in, in regards to what I've learned so far is kind of like uh, you know you're gonna go through a stage of learning earning and return <laughs> You know, you're going to go through a stage of learning, earning, and returning, you know. So if you can understand uh, in those learning stages, you know, if you can remember those, those days where you were getting tested and, you know, exams and quizzes, sometimes you would make hundreds, sometimes you would make A's, yeah. oftentimes you might even make those F's. But we learn through those times and through that, I think, if you're learning from those mistakes, then eventually it will kind of pay forward into the earning phase and then eventually 
what we want to do is impart into that next generation as well. That's good. Um, I want to I want to call that out. You said learning, earning, and returning. Yep. So uh, yeah, uh, that's that's in everything, man. I, I like that. I like that because you you have to learn, and you can learn to the point that now I can earn. And then when you get to that point in earning that now it's time, hey, let me go ahead and return back yeah. to back to the community, whether it be, yeah. you know, in athletics, whether it be in uh, my, my learning journey of photography right now, uh, you know, whatever the journey is, uh, you, you learn, you earn, and then you return. I like that. And, and, and another key that you said was your feelings don't matter. <laughs> like really that's... Don't. That's a big thing that I that I realize uh, for entrepreneurs, especially because you're it's on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So, a lot of times, see people get in their feelings, and that'll mess up everything they've got going on, because it's not really about your feelings. It's about the task at hand. It's about the business, whatever the business is. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really important as well. Um, so we talked about challenges. We talked about accomplishments. Um, if you just had one, you know, golden gem. One thing you learned in your time that, you know, flicked the light switch and said, hey, Eureka, I found it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you had one thing, you know, what, what, what do you think you would like to share with you? Um, I think kind of goes back to that learning, earning, and returning aspect. I, I think the principle and the foundation of what MVP performance is was when, when I got that, that, that understanding, that epiphany, that revelation, that it wasn't just about the wins and losses, but it was about the wins and losses of life. What, what I had to do is really, really change the entire mission statement of what MVP performance was all about. It, it, it wasn't about generating revenue or making money because at, at, at some point, you know, you're going to be able to sustain enough to pay your bills and to pay this. At, at what point do you want more and more and more and more? And when you continue to want more and more and more, I don't think that there's nothing wrong with having a positive ambition to, to strive and, and to exceed. But when you're cons constantly consumed on that more, I think you miss the principle of that learning and earning and the ability to return back because if it's all about you then you're never going to really want to give back so i think the biggest thing that that i could kind of lay the entire foundation of what we're all about is is three principles that i think are going to remain throughout all of eternity that's going to be faith hope and love so when you're looking at faith there's a, a process of learning you know so I don't know, uh, you know, some of our viewers may not necessarily have an opinion or a view about God, but in my personal opinion, I, I believe that the Bible is the you know, inspired word of God. And even if you look at my Savior, our Savior, our, 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 our Creator, even He went through a stage of learning. He had to learn His faith, right? He, he was found in the temples, kind of learning from the teachers and so on and so forth. And it wasn't until that majestic 30-year mark, right, of learning that he was able to now return and kind of give back, you know, to, to all those things. But we do miss the earning part. He had to earn that right to be the Messiah. It's just like if you want to be the greatest athlete, if you want to be the greatest entrepreneur, if you want to be, you got to earn that right and you got to put in the work and you got to put in the hours and, and, and the sweat equity in order to have that a right to return as well. Man, yeah, that's a mouthful, man. I can't even, I can't even <laughs> elaborate on that, man. <laughs> I'm a, hey, and for the viewers that have been with us, you already know Christopher, not Chris, can elaborate on anything. But I'm not going to elaborate on that, man. I appreciate that, man. Uh, you said some really key things that, you know, even in probably editing this footage, I'm going to be gotcha. rewatching and, like, might even be taking a couple of notes because those were, you said some really good points as far as, you know, faith, learning, learning and faith is kind of the same thing. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I like that. Uh, because you, you got to have the faith that you can continue and push along that journey to learn, yeah. to get to that point that when does the learning end and the earning begin? Yeah. I know that's because that's I know that's kind of a struggle phase for a lot of people. Absolutely. You know, when OK, when do I get to start making some money off of this, though? When, mm -hmm. when does it really make a return for me? Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then not getting so caught up on that return for me that you can return that to others. Yeah. That's. That's that's a that's great, man. That's that's some epic knowledge right there because those type of things are the things that people go through all the time that don't always get talked about. So sure. I'm glad we're able to share that with the people. Remember, remember who you represent. Remember that last thing that's always in the back of your uh, shoulder pads. All right, in that game.
Represent yourself, represent your family, and represent God. Family on three. One, two, three, family! Find us on social media, on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, the whole night. Most times it's going to be at MVP Performance. So definitely check us out. We're really excited about all the things that are taking place, not only into the summer, but into the future. Uh, we're definitely going to be expanding not only in San Antonio, but we're looking forward to franchising not only in the state, but even in the nation. So look in 2019 for some of those expansions to take place. And uh, we look forward to serving the community moving forward. Wow. So, man, I just want to thank Mr. Daniel Alderetti again, MVP Performance, uh, where some of the top athletes in the city and around the country train. Uh, again, my name is Christopher, not Chris. Uh, before we go, before we go, I almost forgot. We uh, normally do a book of the day. We're This is my first guest that was actually checking out the books before he showed up, so uh, before we got started. So we're going to go with the resilience factor by uh, Karen Rivich and Andrew Shatt, both PhDs. The Resilience Factor, Seven Keys to Finding Your Inner Strength and Overcoming Life's Hurdles. Uh, it's a good book about changing your thought process as far as moving forward and elevating your life through elevating your mind. Uh, so, you know, I like to do book of the day, and when I do a book of the day, I like to share. Oh, so appreciate that. This is going to be for you. Thank you very uh, much. Hopefully that can help you in, you know, in those valleys we were talking about sure. to keep you in the, in the right mind frame and to keep you moving forward. Man. Excellent. Leaders are always leaders, so I always take the book for sure. Yes, appreciate sir. It. And again, another episode of Tone Setter TV in the books. I appreciate you guys hanging with me. And remember, if you want to be a tone setter, you got to figure out a way to set the tone. Peace. Hey, thank you everybody for joining us for this episode of Tone Setter TV. We hope there is a learning moment in this episode for each and every one of you. If you are an entrepreneur or are interested in being a part of Tone Setter TV, please email us at tonesetterent at gmail.com. Also, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our entrepreneurs. And remember, to be a tone setter, you have to figure out a way to set the tone.